So in this video, we're going to learn about relative motion in between two particles. And this is something that you're probably already intrinsically familiar with. For instance, if I have a car traveling this way at 5 meters per second, and then I have another car traveling straight for it at 7 meters per second, we know that the collision that's going to happen here is not going to be at 5. It's not going to be at 7. It's going to be at 12. We kind of just know that this collision's going to really stink because both of these speeds are going right at each other. So we intuitively know to add these speeds. Learning the concept of relative motion, we're actually going to see the math at play that describes these situations. So let's say we had some x and y axis. And let's say we had some person A right here. And let's say that was me. I am person A. And then let's say we had another person, a person B over here. So I can use two position vectors to describe the positions of these two people. So my position vector is going to be RA. And really, remember, all this means is that I'm going to be at some x coordinate right here, Rax, and some y coordinate here, Ray. These are the two components of this position vector. A position vector is basically just a vector that has all the information in it to specify exactly where I am. So, of course, this is my position as measured from the origin. Of course, we'll have the same concept for B, a position variable that has the x and y information for B, of course, also measured from the origin. Now, it looks like B is pretty far away from the origin. We'll call it maybe 12 meters. Person A, that is me, is pretty far away from the origin. We'll call that 9 meters. But from my perspective here, me standing here, it doesn't look like person A, or I'm sorry, person B, is that far away. Person B is really closer to me. Person B might be maybe 7 meters away from me. So this right here, this position vector, is really the position of B relative to A. It's how far away in the X and in the Y is B away from me. So where is B from my perspective? So. If you noticed here, we have vector addition going on here. This is tip to tail vector addition. And of course, when you do this vector addition, I know this kind of looks like 90, but never assume that it's 90. It's probably not. So what it looks like I'm doing is I'm taking vector A, this first one, and I'm tip to tail adding that with this relative position vector and as we can see here this would be the sum of this tip to tail addition so equals the position of B measured from the origin so of course these are all vectors here they all have components I's and J's and K's if you're in 3D I have an I and J for this guy, an I and a J for this guy. So if I subtract this vector over here and do position of B minus the position of A, I can figure out the position of B from the perspective of A. And that's pretty useful. A lot of times we'll be targeting this relative quantity. This is the position of B with respect to A, but 
We'll soon talk about the velocity of b with respect to a and the acceleration of b with respect to a. So let's say we have motion going on. And of course b might move over here. Me at a might move over here. And of course as a result of that, my position vectors will change. And of course as a result of that, my relative position will change. So the point is, each one of these quantities will change with respect to time. Well let's say that I take the derivative of each one with respect to time. I can do that. I can take the derivative of this one as long as I take the derivative of all the other ones. Just like if I have some equation, I can do whatever I want to it as long as I do it to the other side. There must be balance. So, the derivative of position is by default the velocity. The velocity of this particle A measured from our absolute origin right here. This term right here will be the velocity of B. The absolute velocity of B because again it's measured from this non-moving origin right here. We have our plus and here's our interesting term. This is the velocity of B but from my perspective. How fast does it look like B is moving to me? So this brings us back to our original example. Let's say I'm moving this way with 5 meters per second. So that's going to be a positive 5i. And then we have this other guy moving with 7. That's going to be a negative 7i. And let's find out, not from the perspective of a non-moving origin here, from the perspective of me, of me, who is also moving, what is the speed of b? How fast is be traveling here but from my perspective. We know that when we get to this collision point it's really gonna hurt. We're gonna feel a 12 meter per second collision. Let's just see how the math tells us that. So we have my absolute velocity of A plus the velocity B from my perspective, the perspective of A, is equal to the absolute velocity of B. Well if I just subtract this over here to get VBA by itself, I'll of course get that the speed of B as seen by me is really negative, oops, negative 12 to the left. So from my perspective here, it looks like this guy is coming at me with the speed of 12 a lot more quickly. So just like we had our relative equation for position, we have our relative equation for velocity. Same idea for acceleration. I can do the derivative of each one of my terms here and taking the derivative of velocity is acceleration. So the true acceleration of A plus the acceleration of B but from the perspective of A is equal to the true acceleration of B. So if I wanted to subtract the acceleration of A off of the acceleration of B, we would learn if I'm, if I'm in a car right here at A, and you know here's another car B how fast does it look like B is accelerating from my perspective here again it's that same sort of information that uh, this equation and this equation is giving me is just acceleration which is of course a little harder to think about it's always for me it's always been hard to kind of visualize acceleration and so these three equations here are how we can quantify the relative motion between two particles. 
and in the next couple of videos we'll just get some practice using these equations. So, hope everything made sense. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments.